Hello and welcome back to Classical Dressage Coach Reviews USDF Dressage Tests. So today we are getting into the third level tests where we've got your half pass at the trot, extended walk, half turn on the haunches at the walk, single flying change, extended canter, and extended trot. So for a lot of these movements, these are very much more advanced movements. They require the lift and lightness of the second level, which if you remember, the second level expectations get higher. So also the third level expectations even higher. Um, but the extended, so for the extended canter, remember it is the largest, most uphill canter of all of the canters. So you've got your stretching canter, and then going up, you have your lengthened canter, medium canter, and now the extended canter. Every, every version has to be going more extended, lengthened, uphill, working in the thoracic sling, and the rider is allowing the horse to move upwards and forwards. Same thing with the extended trot, and <sighs> So for the extended trot, this one's a little bit more controversial, especially at the upper levels. Unlike the extended canter, which the horse can swing its hips underneath of him and get a good extension despite the rider, if the rider is even inhibiting them, you've got the extended trot. That one can actually be fooled with quite a bit in the upper levels, and you see that a lot when you've got no true extension, you've got snatching happening, and then the horse is just raising its front end, front feet. The front end is dropped. I mean, an educated eye will be able to see it very easily, but the front legs are so high, the front um, thoracic sling is dropped, and you've got this butt going up, so the horse is downhill, but the legs are uphill, and you've got these legs in the back that are trailing, but they're snatching, so it looks like it, it's just a very weird um, alternate unhealthy way of moving but almost every single extended trot at the FEI levels are is like that it's just it's insane um, but that's how it is today but that is not a true a true extended trot um, a true extended trot is a more upwards forwards and extended way of going where all of the legs are in, moving in unison, <laughs> basically. A single flying change, so unlike the doubles or triples flying changes like the every other, you've got, instead of a simple change, you've got your canter that is going down to the walk or a halt and then going up into the canter opposite lead, that's a simple change. You've got a flying change, so now the horse is changing leads whilst still in canter. Um, you've got your half turn on the haunches at the walk, so it is 180 degrees, and you are turning on the haunches, so it's more of a pivot and less of a pirouette. So a pirouette is more of the hind end is going in a smaller circle than the front end, so it's kind of moving across. A turn on the haunches is the horses sitting back on its haunches and almost pivoting. The extended walk, different than the free walk. It, a lot, the extended walk is just, should be just like the extended trot, the extended canter. The horse is moving upwards and forwards within that gait, still having com com complete contact. So the horse's, um, the, the horse's body is stretching and lengthening out, reaching into the contact, but it's not forward down. So it's, it can be mixed with, like mixed up with forward down, but it is not forward down, it is extending. Um, the half pass at the trot, it is, well, at least it was a number of years ago. It was a misnomer that the Travers turns into the half pass, which is not true. Travers on the diagonal is very different than the half pass. The half pass is actually a a changing of directional movement within the shoulder in. So you start off with the shoulder in. The aids are 
almost opposite. They're a little bit different. So you've got your shoulder in, your shoulder in, your shoulder in. The horse stays within that shoulder in, but then goes on the diagonal. That's a half pass. So you have to teach the horse how to stay within the shoulder in, but switch your aids so that the horse then moves on a diagonal away. Um, in my opinion, it's a little easier to teach at the canter, but everyone's a little bit different. Everyone trains a little bit differently, and everyone has different strengths and weaknesses within their training. Um, so there we go. Those are the movements. The tests coming up, so we have three of them. Let's get into those. The 2023 third level dressage test, one. We have a nice combination here. I, I'm always a, a sucker for grays. And so far, so good, other than that vertical is very... So this person is very much behind the vertical. And that's not okay. So in third level, that should be not a thing. Um, so honestly, if I was the judge, I would be taking a lot of points off for this position. It's a high fault since she seems to be staying behind the vertical as well. It's not like a moment. She was just operating that way. And it looks like we've got a shoulder in, I think. So with the shoulder in, this looks very stiff. It's not, the horse isn't really bending. And a lot of that has to do with the horse's position. So you've got this kind of bounce at the trot with the horse's head tucked in, so it it's hard to explain how this works, but the horse's thoracic sling will drop, the horse's base of the neck will try to reach up, and you've got a bounce that's really more like coming through the hocks and the fetlocks instead of the entire body. So it looks bouncy, it looks airy, but it's not healthy for the horse, and the horse since the head is behind the vertical, the horse is unable to engage its thoracic sling and nuchal ligaments because once you bring that face behind that vertical and cut off and kind of pinch that muscle between the jaw and the neck, on, on the underneath of the neck, they can't engage their core properly. So that's why you get this dropping of the thoracic sling and they try to be more bouncy and airy using their other joints instead of the rest of their body. And this is why tongue freedom is also very important because the tongue is also part of that muscle group that allows them to use their body properly. That's why in the correct context, licking and chewing and tongue movement is a good thing. So there's your half turn on the haunches. So that wasn't bad. Another one. That was pretty good. So it wasn't necessarily pivoting. The, I wouldn't expect this horse to pivot in the position that its head is in currently. but I would expect it out of somebody trying to take a third level test. So we're cantering, so I'm looking at the rider's position, very much a driving seat. What I'm seeing in the driving seat is that she's in a chair position, so the knees are going, or are too far ahead of the hips. And the thigh is not relaxed. So when I stay, when I am saying stiff legs, and then you see the, um, 
the calves kind of flopping around, but I still was saying that there's a stiff leg. It's, it's the thigh that I'm looking at. So typically what happens with riders is they will push up against those knee blocks and drive the horse forward and down, which will prevent the horse from lifting properly. And even if this rider isn't pulling this horse's face in, they are causing the horse to go behind the bit because of their driving aids, their driving seat and stiff thighs. So I would consider that more of a lengthening or lengthened trot. It's not really an extended trot. And like I said, the, the way to achieve an extended trot properly is to allow the horse to move between your legs properly. A lot of people, if they can't achieve this because they don't want to change their position, they will opt for the FEI level look for their extended trot and force this horse to move its legs in a very unnatural way. So here's test two. I like these guys, she's smiling, very happy. This horse looks more engaged, for sure. More engaged as in the hind leg, those joints are bending much more, I like that. The horse's hind end is coming more under. The rider's leg is in less of a chair seat, but I would have liked, would wanted the leg a little bit longer. That's a nice shoulder in, a good bend. It's a nice rombert. <coughs> Again, good bend, the horse has a good position. The leg doesn't look as stiff, but it could loosen up. So it looks like she's trying to drive this horse into a extended trot. It looks more like a medium trot to me from this angle. But there's always things to work on. So there's a little bit less bend here, but this might be the horse's stiff side. I like that, that's nice. And in my opinion, the fact that she's smiling and it seems like she's having a good time is, is good. The horse's ears are forward, head is not behind the vertical. I like it. I would want to see more invisible aids from her. Her hand is steady, it's nice. That's a, a decent pivot, it's more like a pirouette, but they can work on that. And notice this horse is in a simple snaffle. The other horse was in a double. So the double does not necessarily equal collection. The double does not cause collection. It is just a different way of articulating what you need to know, what the horse needs to know to the horse. I have used a double. I have used two different types of dub double bridle combinations. Uh-oh, there we go. So she was going into the canter. It's a, it's a nice can active canter. There's a little bit of a miscommunication over there, but. So I, if I were coaching this rider, I would do more seat exercises with her so that she gets rid of this driving seat and starts to lengthen those legs out a little bit more. But this horse has a very nice active canter and is bending those legs and bringing the hind end more under. There's your half pass at the canter. Oh, <laughs> a little rough. So 
So I wouldn't really consider this horse a third level horse. I would consider more of a coming into second level, but I still want to remain positive with these guys. The horse is lifting more than the horses that we've seen before in the second level and the last one. The horse seems happier. The rider seems happier. The horse is kind of shaking his tail a little bit more, but the horse, this horse just seems a little more freer in movement. So whatever they did with this horse is a little bit better and didn't completely shut down their uh, desire to go forward and up. So I would hope some more training, the horse gets better, the rider gets better. So this looks like a decent horse. Again, this looks more like a lengthening than a extension. Or extended. I would want to see a better, more consistent contact with the horse's mouth from a third level rider. This horse seems to be pretty decent for third level. Not as straight as I would have liked, would like to see from my third level horse. And it looks like the horse continually wants to go into canter because I can see that outside leg was very stiff on the horse. And the horse, when she was asking him to do a half pass at the trot, the aides were getting confused with canter. That's very easy. That can easily happen when your inside leg does not open up and give the horse a direction to go into. So if you don't open up that inside leg so that the horse can move away from the outside leg during the half pass, you can confuse that with the aids for canter. So I'd consider this rider more of a first level or training level rider. The horse is more of a second level schooling to third level horse, it seems. So I would go back to the drawing board with both of these guys separately and then put them back together. Or just go back down to uh, first level with both horse and rider and then just work our way back up if I, if I were the one coaching these guys. All right, so let's see how we do with these pirouettes. Or not pirouettes, the Terrell and Haunches. So you see that the horse didn't really pivot on its hind end. It just kind of crossed over. It's a little bit, oh, that's better. That's what you want, okay. But yeah, the hind end just kind of, the legs just crossed over each other and the horse just kind of like pivoted around without having the pivot point be on its haunches. The pivot point was more like under the rider. That happens when the horse is not engaged properly and not collected properly. The horse has decent activity and the joints of the hind end, not as good as the other horse, but better than the first horse. I would wanna see a little more uphill from a third level horse during canter. less bending of the knee from the rider. A lot of times it's very tempting for riders to want to continue to bend that outside leg during canter work and half pass work because it, it feels like, oh there's that change, it feels like it's doing more, something. It's doing more if I bend it more and go up their ribcage more. It's really not. It, it just, it makes your aid bigger. It teaches the horse that, it, that you, it needs a bigger aid in order to do what you're asking him to do. It's just not necessary and both horse and rider will get into bad habits. 
And you can see during this flying change, that now the horse is cross-fired. This is because the horse is not truly collected and the rider's legs are too tight. So the, the thigh is bracing up against the knee block too much and is not relaxing. So the rider is actually cutting off the horse's ability to use his back in a coordinated fashion, so that's why the crossfire. And this is what happens with driving seats. Much of the time, the driving seat will drive the hips into the saddle and the knees into the thigh blocks, or the, knee, the needles, which these days is kind of being turned into thigh blocks as big as they are becoming. Oh man, I didn't even think that, 20 years ago, I didn't think that knee rolls would get that big, but they're, they're definitely getting there that big. I mean, I did see them on para riders because those, their legs, at least on the ones that are paralyzed, those legs have to stay in place whilst completely jelly because a paralyzed person has no control over their legs, so they need a saddle to hold them in. Now you see normal riders with all of these huge knee blocks and all of that, but it's, it's because they get into this habit of bracing up against it instead of just allowing the horse to move freely between their legs. And what I mean by that is our hips can rotate or, or out and I'm not talking about a big obvious hip rotation where your knees are flying out at the, at the sides. I'm talking about a relaxed movement, slight movement of the thigh forward and back. Because when you have that movement of the thigh forward and back, you're allowing the horse to move its rib cage and move its hind end underneath of himself and use his entire body. Once you tighten that up and just compress, you're, act, you're actually causing the horse to brace up against you and pitch its um, pelvis forward. So you are completely impeding the horse from collecting. Um, and I think that's kind of a, a lost art or a lost fact, because I see it so often all the way up to the FAI levels. I'm like, this, this little small detail is lost in the English dressage circles. So I'm honestly, we need to get it out. We need to get that little known fact back so that we can get our horses back in collection and lifting their thoracic sling and all of that. So third level, I would expect more uphill movement, more extension, true, more true extension instead of just lengthenings. Because much of the time I will see, you know, a lengthened trot or a kind of a medium trot and then the rider will just give up. They're like, okay, I'm going to go to the extended trot. I want it to look like the Olympics. And then they teach this horse this weird way of going. And then now, now the horse isn't even in a true collection and is doing some sort of thing that you, that you would see in the circus in the 1800s. <laughs> so... But enough of that, enough of me droning on about that. Um, this was third level. And if you'd like your dressage test reviewed, I, I, am, I, I don't try to be harsh, but I do want to be honest. Um, if you'd like your dressage test reviewed for free, please email the uplift equine at gmail.com and I will feature you in this playlist for the USDF dressage test review. Thanks and have a wonderful day.